All right, so uh, we are going to um, uh, go through workshop five and uh, uh, and see uh, uh, what's going to be the, uh, the, the, the what, what is it about and go through everything. Let me just close my door for a second. My dog is barking downstairs. I don't want that uh, to uh, kind of uh, interfere with us. Hold on for a second. All right, I'm back. All right, so uh, we're just going to go through um, workshop five and, and explain what it is. Uh, it is focused on uh, the um, operator overloading. That is why, uh, especially for the part one, everything is done for you. The only thing that you need to do is the, uh, the operator overloading. So uh, you have uh, um, two classes, a chapter class and a book class. Um, essentially, um, uh, you have series of uh, chapters in a book, so you have two classes, um, and uh, uh, the, each chapter has its own titles, and also uh, uh, it has its own title and uh, number of pages, number of words, uh, chapter number, and some um, initialization function that it's used in the in constructors and so on and so forth. So you'll see all the things that are created. And, uh, display function that displays the chapter by receiving an O stream and returning an O stream. Um, that's the chapter and then you have uh, um, the implementation of the functions that it has and then we're going to have a book class that um, is, uh, have, it, does, it does have a title of its own, it has author, number of chapters, um, a number of pages and the price and it has an array of chapters in it which can go so essentially a number of chapters over here can go up to the max number of chapters over here again with initialization and the function add chapter um, um, and the constructors three of them and a summary that it prints the book summary so that's essentially what your classes are and all you need to do is to overload operators for them as instructed over here so um, uh, any questions before we continue on this All right. Meanwhile, so let's talk about chapter. Um, yes, Jennifer, go ahead. You have a question. Hi, Parfer. Hello. Uh, how to add the intercast operator uh, overload function? Uh, I'm very confused about this. Th these are th this is called actually type conversion operator, and I'm quite sure that you have it in the. Um, let me bring the the content up over here. If if it's not taught, the, um, are you in my class, kid Jennifer, or you are in uh, some other uh, profs class? Uh, I'm not your student. You're not my student because I haven't taught it yet. I'm going to do it tomorrow. So um, that's what it is. Let me just explain to you. Let me just go to operator overloading over here. So member operators. Oh, shoot. I have to connect. <laughs> just a second. My apologies. Just a moment. And there we go. So member functions, uh, member operators. Seriously? I am connected, am I not? I am connected. That's interesting. Uh, uh, let me see if I can actually do it over here or not. Let me see what's going on here. Hmm. 
member operators. I am on VPN. Um, okay, so um, I have a uh, something over here that is uh, there for the reason I put it over here. I'm going to bring these up. So um, I actually have a copy of the notes on my computer. I'm going to bring that up. The notes. Um, so book chapter five member operators extract all that's one in extract all Sorry, I missed the poll earlier. What was it about? Uh, the question was uh, how to do type type uh, conversion uh, overload, which is casting up uh, overload essentially. Uh, I just want to see if we have it in here. So that's the one. Conversions. Seriously? Oh, give me a second. Um, let me bring it up one more time. I have to scroll it down. That's not going to work out. So, conversion, prefix, postfix, type conversion. Okay, Jennifer, are you with me? Yes, I'm here. There we go. You see, bool operator, operator bool. It explains over here how it's done. Cast operator. It shows over here how to do cast operator. So um, it's going to show it over here for you. Uh, let me bring it. Uh, cast operator. Anyways, it's exactly like that bool. It's the same thing. So this is type conversion operator is the cast operator. So instead of bool over here, you got to put character pointer or something. Whatever that they ask you to do so. Okay. So if... Um, um, if in here is asking you to create uh, uh, a double typecast operator, then uh, as mentioned over here, it's going to be operator double like that. And then that operator double, when you implement it, in in that you will you will specify what the uh, what you want that cast operator to do. Okay. And your, your prof is going to teach that probably tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, if it's not, because I am planning to do that tomorrow. All right? Okay, thank you. But, these are, but these are the ones, yeah. If, if, oh. if, if you want to know, these are the ones. The type conversion operator, uh, the bool operator, it says it's the same thing. So type conversion operator, that's what it is. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, so... Uh, the next thing, uh, so so these are the cast operators you're going to do, a prefix plus plus operator that will increase. You know exactly what they are. Um, insertion helper operator overload. This is supposed to be, uh, this is something very simple. So essentially what you do with this helper operator overload, you have to make your class, the, the, the chapter that you have over here that is being displayed using this function, you want it to be displayed using C out. Therefore, you have to create an, a helper operator that at left side it accepts a C, C out, at right side it accepts a chapter uh, constant uh, uh, reference, and then um, uh, 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 it returns an O stream, and you call this display inside your operator overload, and that's. Uh, uh, your insertion operator overload for for uh, for C out. Are we okay with that? All right. So that's that. Uh, uh, my apologies. Just a second. Uh, I'm gonna pause for a second. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, so that's for the uh, for the chapter class. For the book class, um, what you have over here uh, again are the constructor and uh, uh, 
uh, different types of constructor and this, uh, the function that prints out the summary. Uh, what you need to do is to overload the following. Now, some of these are not even tested in your main. I couldn't find any testers over there um, that test them, but uh, nevertheless, you have to overload them. Um, uh, we're going to check to see if you have over overloaded them properly or not. So a postfix operator overload to increase the number of chapters by one. Remember, this postfix operator is not supposed to work like postfix in integer, which means it affects after this statement. Just uh, it's exactly like a plus plus operator that is prefix, but this one's going to be called postfix. So no action for its being postfix, sh postfix should be taken. Um, it, um, do, is that clear, uh, what I told you about that? And Frank, you said no in, on my last question. You have a question on uh, on what we had before on uh, um, uh, on see in and see out? Oh, sorry, I didn't see the no over there. Frank? I don't see it. Okay. Please activate your microphone and reply if you um, answer no to the question. Thank you. Anyways, uh, all right. So that's the uh, the postfix operator. Um, uh, so a private member function add chapter which receives a point to a chapter as a chapter to array of chapters. So the chapters that you have. Yes, Luma. Uh, Lumia, sorry. Uh, professor, I just uh, uh, stuck here um, in the add chapter function here. Uh, it required to call the uh, postfix operator, uh, the first the first one. The first one, okay, the postfix operator. Yeah. Uh, yeah, here, the first, I, I don't know how to call the, 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 the postfix operator. I don't the know. postfix operator is exactly like prefix operator, but in the argument, you put an int. And that int has nothing to do with anything. It just, if it is only a flag, so let me actually create a, um, let me create a, a solution for today's lecture so I can actually uh, give you example using code. I think that's going to be much more effective. Um, uh, uh, Lomia, you, you are not my student, are you? <laughs> no, no. Oh, that's okay. No, 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 no. Just I'm just asking. That's all. It's there is no uh, not important at all. And I just noticed that I did not post my notes for the NAA section. Let me add that one too. Uh, Okay, so, okay, and all right, so that's that, and let's go back in OP244, and Workshop overview and create something over here for workshop. So select folder and that's going to be WS05. So create. Okay, so as an example on uh, things are going bananas on my computer today. There you go. So as an example to uh, how to do postfix. This is how it is. So uh, let me just add a PRG.CPP over here. Okay, so I'm going to give you a very simple example. So yeah, let's say I have a class called number. Okay, and class number has an int value. Are we okay with this? Yes. Okay. okay. And now I want to have a postfix operator overloaded to add one to the value of number. So let's uh, initialize number to zero and also have a constructor over here just for the heck of it. So int, int value. In here, m value is set to value, 
and let's put an initial value over here of zero for the default constructor uh, so um, uh, to add one to it it's usually when you're doing a, uh, a plus plus operator you return the reference of the owner operator plus 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 okay and that's m value plus plus and you return this so this is a po prefix operator not postfix right to make it postfix all you need to do is this now it's postfix okay and that int is not an argument because the signature of both are identical they did it like this so you can actually uh, uh, differentiate between the two so this becomes a postfix operator this becomes a prefix operator all right so o stream reference uh, print um, yes go ahead my question is the post fix uh, uh in the website the book notes it's i, th I think they're missing the the the, the number the, the 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 symbol the reference symbol this one so, yeah, oh, I, I think I that's the, that's exactly what I mentioned when I said, did, did you uh, uh, do um, the I'll tell you why they did that. OK, give me two seconds. Let me just finish the 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 the, the O stream uh, the the display. Yeah. Give me two seconds. Constant number reference and and in here. Oh, sorry. Not that. So that's equal to, let me just include IO stream too. Since we are doing it, let me just explain it over here so we can run it and you can test it later on. So when we have something like this, uh, and that's uh, C out, so I'm defaulting it to C out. And this is the, so, and in here I'm just going to show the value. So I'm going to say C out uh, OSDR return osdr uh, m value that is my print and to overload this thing and make it uh, uh, work with uh, c out i'll simply go o stream reference uh, operator and at left i'm going to get an o stream reference uh, what do i call it uh, osdr and at the right side, I have a constant number reference n. And in here, all I need to do is to say return print uh, n dot print and OSDR pass to it. Of course, I have to make this a constant. Otherwise, that's not going to work. So that's that. Now, you say in the book, it says over here or somewhere, it says that there is no reference in here, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No now, I'll, I'll explain, now, I will explain what? Int main. So in here, I have number n, say 10, OK? Now, if I say over here, C out n, obviously, I will have 10 printed. Uh, zero. If I, if I run and um, compile and run it, n is going to get printed as 10. Are we OK with this? Are we OK with this? Yes. All right. Okay. All right. So now if I have over here M, OK, if I say N is equal to plus plus, uh, sorry, M is set to plus plus uh, N, OK, and I go C out M and C out N. And this one over here, let me just show that I'm showing that that I'm printing N and I'm printing M. If I print this, obviously you're going to have uh, 11 and 11. Are we okay with this? All right. Okay. Are Got we okay it. with this? Yeah. All right. I'm okay. Now, if you write over here, M is equal to N plus plus, and you do the exact same thing, if it was an integer, not a number, then m would have been 11 
and ed n would become 12. Do you know that? Yeah. You know that about integers, right? So, yes. so if I have over here int not n on m, so if that's an integer, and I run this program, this is what I get. As you see, n is 12, but m remains 11. Right? Are we okay with this? All right, but if I make it a number, if I run it again with the exact same thing, they are both 12. You see that? Yeah. The reason yeah. is that when you overload an operator, you are taking over. So the plus plus in int that acted after the statement was done will not work anymore unless you implement it. Are, you, are we okay with this? See, if uh, it's an int, the outcome will be 12 and 11 because the definition of plus postfix plus plus in int is that first the assignment happens, first this statement happens, so essentially it will be divided to m is set to n and then after that n plus plus. That's the definition of a postfix operator in integers, correct? Yeah, right. Okay. So but if I if I overload that, then I am taking over. It means now I am creating operator plus plus. Because I am creating operator plus plus, it's just another function. And functions are called before the uh the line, and therefore they are gonna be both twelve. So if I want to simulate that, what I need to do is this. I have to fake it. How do I fake it? This is how I will fake it. So I copied that one, as you see. I'm going to comment this one. Sometimes this automatic thing of see uh, visual studio goes on my nerves okay so there you go so now if i want to fake that i have to say i'm not going to return a reference of the current object instead in here i'm going to create a number uh call it before and i'm going to set that one to this so what i will have i will save the value before the plus plus is happening and instead i'm going to return that so now what happens is that when plus plus post face plus plus is called face first it will save the current status of the object then it will add that one then it will send that one back so we can actually call this i don't know before or old now if i call this you will see it actually becomes 12 and 11. you see that yeah so this is why you see they put it that way. You don't have to. It's an operator overload. Operator overload is simply a function. You can make plus plus dance and sing for you if you want to. It doesn't have to be plus plus. But because we are sane beings, because we are not crazy, we make plus plus do plus plus, right? Because of that, yes. it is your responsibility and the rule of the lo rule and logic of the business to see if your plus plus want to return the previous state of the object which we tell you we don't want it here we don't want in this so essentially your plus plus will have to be uh, declared as this one not this one got it got it so uh Plus plus, we are uh, overloaded this operator uh, first the uh, uh, prefix and then the post fix the both plus plus. So overloaded so that we uh, try to uh, uh, change a little the reference, take out the reference uh, to make it a little um, different or maybe uh, to prevent overload. Um, no, it's just two different types of overload. Take a look at this. This is now if I do it like this. Okay, when you actually run it, I'm going to go step by step. Okay, so if I run run the step by step, you will see that when it's actually running, 
it comes over here the first one is prefix it goes the one that doesn't have an int and runs it when it goes to the postfix one it goes to the one that has an int now what you want to do inside it's your choice you're the programmer you can make it work like a regular plus plus or you can make it work like an integer plus plus that affects afterwards or you can not do plus plus over here just print I don't know see how hello I am here <laughs> anything you're the program you can do anything you want in your function but we try to do something that makes sense and that's all okay okay, okay. all right okay Okay, uh, I hope I could explain it, but uh, anyways, so that's that. So that's the postfix operator, and this and and this was an example of the uh, the insertion operator for the chapter that was requested to be done. So going back to what we had over there, uh, let me just stop the execution. By the way, so that's that one. Uh, so yeah, so for the book, a postfix plus plus operator to increase the number of chapters by one. It doesn't tell you that it wants you should return the, the, the old status of the object. So just overload it, make it postfix, and make it add one to the chapter. That's all. And obviously, when you're adding one to the chapter, you have to go to the maximum number of chapters that you have. Um, a private add chapter, which receives a pointer uh, to a chapter and adds the chapter to the array of chapters for the book. So, uh, so uh, in uh, book.cpp, uh, when you uh, are doing the add chapter, you essentially, what you do um, um, in here, you have an array of chapters, okay? So what you do, whatever the number of chapters is, that's the last element that you're supposed to add. I'm sure that your, your professor showed you an example of, of kind on the, of these type of things. Um, so yeah, so uh, this uh, array of chapters are all empty. There is nothing in them. And number of chapters starts from zero. Therefore, add chapter when it's called. It sets the first one, which is M, zero, M number of chapters to the incoming chapter that it's receiving then it will uh, increase number of chapters by one and only it will do that if number of chapters is not uh, has not reached uh, max number of chapters so that is that uh, display takes a reference of so oh, so the display is exactly created like the display in here for the for the there we go like this display so the displays are exactly the same way so you create a display that way so a uh, public member uh, called display takes a reference of O stream returns a reference of O stream this function is going to print a book object according to the provided sample output you are required to properly use overload implemented in the chapter module so yeah so any overloaded uh, casting that you have done to access the values of the chapter you just do that and you print them one by one and uh, the output uh, is shown down there so you can exactly see what it is uh, how it's shown it's, it's it tells you exactly what it is so you can see exactly what the output is so uh, yes uh, so that's gonna be display uh, a typecast operator that returns number of chapters these are very simple functions just a function that returns an attribute returns uh, a member variable a boolean typecast which uh, with it will return true if title and author and number of chapters are non-empty okay um, so uh, so essentially you go through these conditions if these conditions are correct that uh, boolean operator returns true so essentially Boolean operator tells if your book is a valid book to uh, to be used or not. Uh, double will return the price. Uh, constant character pointer will return the title. 
uh, the logical not operator overload returns true if any of the conditions within the bool operator are non true essentially this is redundant this a logical not operator is just for practice but when you overload the boolean operator then uh, the not logical operator is essentially it's at, it, it will work because uh, the cast is there this is just for uh, practice okay so so you just create it uh, a plus equal operator overload to allow adding a chapter to a book so you know exactly this done add chapter is there so um, well, what it does it essentially calls that one so the plus equal does that one uh, what minus equal does uh, is essentially reducing the uh, the price by uh, the discount val uh, value so a minus equal over by uh, uh, apply a dollar value discount uh, so whatever you have it reduces the price by that much uh, an insertion operator overload will print the book and the output console make sure you properly reuse the display function so I I showed you this is exactly how you do it the way I mentioned it this is exactly so this print is your display over there if you have it like that all objects that are uh, the, the that you create the display function properly in them will overload the the insertion operator like this the syntax is identical in all of them uh, are we okay down to here all right the tester program is right there go through it run it it's got it's it's a very simple uh, workshop to do you should be able to do it in an hour or two uh, just follow the instructions and uh, it's gonna be fine uh, all right, so that's part one. Any question about part one? All right, so let's do part two. So part two, you you already have uh, a module called power, which essentially encapsulates power and its rarity. It's um, the superhero has a power, like power of I don't know lightning and it's the the rarity is this much or power of I don't know elevation or power of I don't know healing something like that whatever so these are the powers that you uh, so it actually kept keeps that those values uh, the power is here is this the power no that's the main uh, if the power is uh, right up here so let me just bring it up so in DIY if you look at the power module this is the power module it has the it has a name and it has rarity it has uh, constructors uh, it has a check name that actually returns the name for you it, it check rarity it returns the rarity for you it tells you if, to, if it's empty or not and you can display the details of it as such okay so uh, and that display details is uh, essentially um, uh, um, a helper operator and the contents of it is the the contents of power.cpp is uh, the the power how it's display how it's set and all those stuff please go through it and see what it is and display details essentially receives a, a, an array of powers and displays the details of each uh, of all uh, those powers one by one as you see so this is the power class that you have and using this you are going to create the the hero uh, uh, the hero uh, module which is as follows let me just bring it up right the hero module yeah so uh, you gotta uh, create four private data members for for the hero one is the name and it has up to maximum length um, make sure you add one for the null you have uh, a pointer to powers that is a dynamic array of powers 
you have a powers count that is how many powers do you have how many different powers the CEO has and what is the total power level that is a calculated value based on the powers that uh, the, the hero has uh, so if this will be calculated value every time you need to calculate this variable it will be done as follows so sum of rarity so you get all the rarity of the powers one by one uh, and then you multiply it by the total counter count of powers and that becomes the the power level of the hero so you're going to have a uh, create a constructor a default constructor and you're going to have a, a, a overload the constructor with uh, three arguments name power and pounds powers count um, then uh, you're going to have to create the display function uh, that is by standard exactly as I mentioned and displays the uh, the hero like that so name list of powers so essentially calls the uh, uh, essentially lists all the powers of the uh, uh, hero using the function that is provided in the power and at the end it calculates the power level and prints it out again the uh, the power level over here is a redundant value because you can always calculate it having it as an integer it's just for practice usually you do not store what you can calculate uh, but this is just uh, uh, an example for you to uh, uh, see how you can set uh, attributes based on uh, the values that you have in other attributes um, so that's that one uh, the next thing we want to talk about is the plus equal operator so the plus equal operator uh, uh, it accepts a power reference uh, and it's going to be added to the list of your heroes so um, essentially uh, what it does when you uh, call the plus equal operator that accepts uh, a reference of a power uh, what you do uh, you uh, increase the size of the array dynamically by one and you make the next uh, uh, pointer point to the reference that you are receiving uh, of the uh, uh, plus equal uh, of the uh, um, argument that you're receiving from the from the operator plus um, and uh, yeah that's it and then you add one to the um, powers count and you recalculate the up uh, the uh, the power level and you're done so uh, essentially this is kind of a quick review on the um, dynamic memory allocation that you have done before every time a power is added you just increase the size by one and that's that uh, minus equal just re reduces the power level by the value that it's receiving it, it has its use later on less than and greater than it will take two references of uh, hero parameters it will return true uh, if power level of one hero uh, left uh, right hero is less uh, left hero is less than the right one and that's it uh, and uh, it, it uh, the greater than works the exact opposite of that one so that's uh, those are the two and the insertion the, the insertion operator uh, uh, um, is not the insertion operator to print with C out don't be mistaken with that an extraction operator too so um, these two uh, these two operators are done to uh, uh, add powers to uh, uh, to uh, a hero uh, and it's done in two different in two different settings. So either you can have the power at left and hero at right, or hero at left and power at right. They both add uh, a power uh, to to a hero. Um, you can use the plus equal operator that you created earlier for this. Uh, so with this, as you see, you can. Um, I want to see. An example for it over here. There we go. So it actually adds uh, uh, a power to uh, to a hero, and the other way too. There we go. Add a power to a hero. 
and that's that and that's the part two of your workshop any questions about the part two of the workshop all right just uh, anyone who watches this uh, overview soon the project's going to be up and I'm going to have an overview of the project before I go because I'm not going to be here second half of the semester so the um, the overview of the project is going to happen on the last week of the uh, of the semester be aware of it as soon as it gets posted see when the due date is for do is for it then it's going to be a long one because I have to go through the whole thing uh, and then you'll see uh, any questions before we end the session any questions all right thank you very much have yourself a beautiful day and uh, uh, see you later